I think it's the concept that builds strongly on the, on the idea of these convergence plots. Uh, mesh sensitivity or mesh independency is the check that I think you should do in, maybe not in all, but in most of your engineering simulations, especially if you're dealing with something new. If you're familiar that, you know, this numerical settings, this mesh already worked for a couple of cases, then you, you, you probably will not do the mesh independency study for the for the for your next case. But if you're starting with something new, with some new geometry, uh, the mesh independency is something that is the following concept, mesh in the then C or mesh independence is something that you want to achieve, but generally is mesh sensitivity. Sensitivity study. Uh, imagine that you've got some geometry, you're calculating, let's say, the force, heat flux, or something similar. Um, so you can imagine that you're monitoring some force exerted on some portion of the boundary. Uh, here you can plot what kind of force values you get, you get for, for your different space, space discretizations, and you'd come up probably with a plot like, or maybe like that. So if your mesh is too coarse, you have, you will get force values that differ from each other if you change the mesh from one to the other mesh. But if you've got the mesh which is fine enough, then the values of the, of the force or whatever quantity that you're computing should be close to each other. And if, you're, if you see that your results differ, then obviously your mesh is wrong and you, and you need to refine it properly, at least in some areas. Uh, if, you're, if you see that you change the, the refinement of the mesh and the result almost does not change, you're already in the good region because what, what should happen is that whatever you do later is, uh, will stay constant. Uh, and I think it's re very, very important to do uh, not when developing your codes, uh, but it's also very, very important when dealing with commercial simulations in commercial CFD packages. Uh, simply taking a couple of different meshes and see what kind of results do you get. If they do not differ a lot from each other, then you're fine. If they do differ, play with your mesh, definitely. Mm -hmm. For 3D mesh, uh, the types would be what's the, the, the cell size or...? Generally the cell size, like, you know, the very strict and rigorous procedure would be, okay, let's take some discretization, let's refine it by a factor of two, and let's see what happens with the result. Practically, very, very often impossible, because in 3D, refining the uh, the um, you know cell size by a factor of two means increasing in 3D the number of cells by a factor of eight. Mm, so this might already be very very challenging, uh, but I think what you should do is you should do it in you should exploit this concept in a smart way. If you see that you've got areas in your flow that you know, if you can afford in CFD any mesh you would like to use then you will probably compute it on the fine mesh. And I'm almost sure that we've had the great independency study. Your mesh is already fine enough because like you, you had huge computational overhead and you could afford such a mesh. Uh, but the problem is when you can't afford a good mesh, but you need to be sure that your, that your simulations go, have got, you know, give you good results. And what you should do is just take the geometry, discretize, and see, okay, maybe I'm making some, um, you know, 
I, I, I sacrifice, I probably sacrifice some portion of accuracy because I can't have, let's say, more than 20 million cells in my mesh. Uh, so I'm somewhere on the edge, uh, but I'm not sure. So, okay, let's try to generate more, more nodes in the area that, that has got um, steep gradients of the solution or something like that. Let's see what happens. If you've got some separation zone, maybe you should better resolve the boundary layer. So then you would be using this concept not really regularly checking if, if I should refine the mesh by a factor of two, but at least checking, okay, should I refine some mesh parameters in some regions? Does it change anything? Questions? Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Then, once again, we are coming back to the question that you asked, Tim. What was the correct solution? Where should I take the correct solution from? Uh, and the, the next idea that is used often is generating something that we call a manufactured solution. If you want to test a numerical method, a numerical scheme, uh, it's nice if you have an analytical solution that you can compare to. But in many cases, you will not have. Uh, or the analytical solutions are extremely difficult or extremely difficult to, to be generated. Um, so what you can do is, let's imagine that you are developing, implementing code that aims at solving the Laplace equation. So what you should do if you want to exploit the manufacturer solution concept is first, even if you want to solve the Laplace equation, you need to move to Laplace equation with the right-hand side, with, with, with sources. So basically, you need to change to the Poisson equation. Mm. And what we are doing, manufactured manufact, manufactured solution, the idea is very, very, very simple. Let's assume that you want to that you want to solve the Laplace equation uh, and you want to test your numerical code. So you need to think of any geometry that you want to use for testing. Let's assume it's just the rectangle, but you can, you can if, with, with the manufactured solution, you can really generate very, very difficult shapes. Uh, and, and that's the nice thing. You can, you can also, almost for any geometry, you will be able to, to generate the manufactured solution. Uh, let's assume that the y span is from minus one to one. The x span is, let's say, from minus two to zero. And and for some reason, for some reason, you're interested in testing the implementation of Dirichlet boundary conditions. And here you want to have u equals zero. But let's say that here you want to have a very specific um, function profile would be u equals 4 minus y squared. Uh, in many situations when implementing numerical schemes, you are interested whether your boundary conditions work properly, whether your scheme works properly, etc. And you can imagine situations where it doesn't really matter so much for you what, time, what, what, what kind of boundary conditions you will have here and here. But for some reason, it's very important for you to test it on some other boundaries because you've got a new implementation of some inflow boundary condition or whatever else. Uh, so you can easily imagine situations like that. Mm. So what should you do? First, the manufactured solution means that 
you simply come up with the idea of the function that will be your solution. Uh, so let's try to write any field that would satisfy these boundary conditions. And like, if you think for a while, it's not very difficult to, to invent that something like four minus y squared, if we leave it like that, this will work on this line. But here we want to have zero. So let's multiply it by some function that is zero everywhere here. And it's exactly one here. So this might be a sine function. I've done my homework. If you, if you write it like that, then it will be exactly one, let's see, one half uh, should be one, it, and it's minus one, so now good. Okay, so what is the idea of the manufactured solution? Is the, is the following. You already know your solution, Tim. That's already good. You've got something to compare with. Uh, but, but it doesn't satisfy your equation. That's the problem. So what we would do is we take, but what is the equation? The equation is obviously second derivative with respect to x, second derivative with, with respect to, to y equals uh, the source term. So if you've got your correct solution, you can analytically, and derivatives can always be generated analytically, you can simply calculate, okay, what's the first derivative with respect to x of that formula? Well, maybe it will be long, but you can generate something like that with Wolfram Alpha. Uh, okay, if, uh, if I've got that, then let's calculate the second derivative with respect to x. This will be even longer, but it exists analytically. Uh, then you do the same, generating the first derivative with, with respect to y and the second derivative with respect to y. This will be already extremely long, but you see that something that you have generated as d2u over dx squared plus second derivative with respect to y is exactly the source term that you should include in your simulation. Then making it clear, once you've generated f, you know what your solution is but you forget it, you forget the solution, you know the boundary conditions, you know the, the, the forcing, you put the forcing and the boundary conditions into your numerical scheme and say, okay, just solve it. You get some numerical solution and you know that your numerical solution, if it's correct, then it should be exactly that. Clear? Good. Uh, then it's a nice way of generating the correct solution for almost any case and any geometry that you're interested in. And it's, it's, it's a very, very common way of testing numerical codes, uh, making the verification of the numerical scheme. Verification understood as verification says, do I solve equations right? It's like, if I already have got some mathematical equation, I need to check whether if, if my code solves the equation correctly. And that's the verification. Uh, on top of that, you've got validation. And validation is usually referred to as, do I solve the right equations? Uh, it's saying, Okay, if I've got some physical phenomenon, do I generate proper 
physical assumptions and proper mathematical model that once solved really gives me information about the reality and physics. Um, so for the numerical schemes, you are interested in verification. Do I solve the equations right? Uh, for commercial CFD services, you're very much interested in validation. Does it compare, um, does it match the reality? Does it match with the experiment? And that would be the validation of the procedure. 